Okay, John Butler here at the Bay, and I have on the phone with me Meg Gardner. And Meg uh, helps to uh, fulfill a basic human need from Austin, Texas, and that is storytelling. We're all wired for stories, and Meg is one great storyteller. Welcome, Meg. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. And you are a mystery writer, thriller writer. How would you categorize yourself? I would call myself a thriller writer, a mystery writer. I am president of Mystery Writers of America, so I am a mystery writer. I write suspense novels, uh, thrillers, uh, which are you know, designed to be pulse-pounding roller coaster rides with uh, characters facing life and death choices under increasing uh, pressure with time running out as they have to save themselves, their families, their communities, uh, their puppies, whatever. So it's meant to keep you up late at night turning the pages. Well, it sounds like you're writing about everybody today. <laughs> <laughs> As we sit at home, this is called suspense, actually. We are in a time where we are doing our part by uh, holding our breath, in a sense, and really doing what comes unnaturally to ourselves by staying physically distant and connecting like we, you and I are yep. now. Uh, thank goodness we have radio, Zoom, all kinds of ways to, uh, to keep in touch, but it's, um, it's a time where we are all waiting in anticipation and anxiety, which, and that's the basis of suspense in a story, and we yeah. love it, love it on the page or the screen, not so much in real life. Yeah, and we are, in case somebody sees this in the future, we're recording it at the time of the COVID-19 virus, coronavirus, and uh, and so it's, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting time, and it's full, full of mystery. So here, a, a, a little organism, a little microscopic virus coming out of China is basically shutting down the world right now. How are you handling it? I am okay. Uh, my husband and I are uh, working from home. We are extremely fortunate that we can do that. I write novels and uh, he's in IT and music, as you know. Yeah, you with the radio, yeah, with the radio Gunners. Radio Gunners. He's a songwriter, a uh, musician, and uh, we're doing all right. We are not you know, tearing at each other too <laughs> badly because we're both working at home full time at the moment. But thank goodness that we can uh, video chat with relatives. We have three kids who are all in other time zones and we can see them every day uh, and make sure they're okay. See, make, make sure my mom's okay, uh, family and, and loved ones. So uh, we are just keeping on, keeping on as best we can. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, uh, I, I know uh, it's a good time to escape the world and escape into another world, which is, which is what you create. You create the mysteries and th thrillers. You're an Edgar uh, winning novelist. And um, I understand that Stephen King really, really likes your writing. I can tell you with great gratitude and shock that, yes, he does. He has how been. Did, how did he come to discover you? We had the same publisher in Britain, this long story short. I was living in London. He, my publisher sent him a box of books. He had been shoving these boxes in his closet <laughs> for, for a long time, but he had a flight to London and he pulled out the box to find something to read on the plane and pulled out my novel, China Lake, which was not published in the US at the time. Uh, he, he, I wish I could say that he opened it up and said, you know, this prose is, you know, has knocked me flat. I have to take this. But he thought that the, yeah. that the, that the type was nice and big and would not strain his eyes <laughs> on, an, on a, an overnight flight. So he stuck it in his carry on and he read it on the plane. And after that, he um, started telling everybody they should, they should read my books. And he wrote a column for entertainment weekly telling American publishers that they should be publishing my books. And, you know, when a big dog like that barks strangely after yeah. years when nobody wanted to, was interested yeah. uh, within 48 hours, I, I had a, quite a few American publishers that changed their minds. So uh, well, but, only thank him for his, for his generosity toward other artists. Well, pretty good. And, and uh, not a, not a bad uh, endorsement to have, you know, so <laughs> that's actually kind of funny. Like I, I chose the novel because of the uh, typeface size, <laughs> but 
but, but dang, it was but good. But you can be sure he, he is never going to have to pay for one of my books again <laughs> as long <laughs> as the planet is in existence. I make sure that, that he, gets a, he gets a copy of every new one. And he uh, got a copy of my 15th, which was out uh, a few weeks ago. And I was extremely gratified that he enjoyed that one as well. <laughs> Okay, well, I want to get into your latest novel and uh, talk a little bit about some of your other novels. Mm -hmm. But first, I know we have some budding writers and some serious writers in, in our listening audience uh, who are always interested in how another writer writes, you know, and, and their process. So, and I know during this time when everybody's in quarantine with the COVID-19 virus, uh, we'll get, we're going to have probably some new writers, uh, you know, pop up. But what is your writing process? I mean, you... How many, how many novels have you written now? 15. Was, my 15th was published uh, six weeks ago. Okay, so obviously you don't sit around and wait, wait for inspiration, I would assume. You're probably a writer who writes every day. Well, what's, your, what's, your, what's your process? Thank you for asking. I do try to write every day. I regard inspiration as something that's wonderful but not necessary because you can't just wait around for it to strike. Uh, strangely, if you sit down uh, with a pad of paper or sit down at your keyboard and start typing, uh, inspiration tends to show up. It, it looks and sounds a lot like work. <laughs> so that, that is actually the secret. Just do it. If you can get words down on the page, you can always fix them. You can't, uh, you can't fix a blank page. You can- Sort of like uh, painting a wall. You can always retouch it or repaint it. Precisely. So I, I am fortunate to have a publishing contract and deadlines are an incredible inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> you know, your publisher would really like the book so that they can get it on the shelves. And I've trained myself to learn what works for me is that I spend probably a year from conception to final, you know, polishing the, yeah. the book. And that includes a couple of months of research, brainstorming, outlining. I know a lot of people hate to outline. I find that that works best for me. It's whatever works for you as a writer. Yeah. You're not what they Some call people, a pantser, right? No, no, no. I've tried that before. And I ended up uh, so far up the creek uh, without a paddle a canoe <laughs> yeah, yeah. a machete to hack my way out of the weeds that uh, I just got lost so I find it works best for me if I can uh, sketch the 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 broad course of the story the the arc of the story from beginning turning points major characters what the conflict is to the ending because if I can get a at least a broad idea of how this story should end. I can go back and make sure that I've started it in the right place. Yeah. And you write yeah. in the mornings? I write whenever I have the time and wherever I am. I write after I've had a pot of coffee. I will say that <laughs> that inspiration does <laughs> sound a lot like <laughs> yeah. uh, a dark brew <laughs> in and my I, world. Caffeine but, infused writing. Right. I. <laughs> My, my writing has changed over the years, depending on what's going on in the rest of my life. When, uh, when all the kids were still at home and at school, I knew exactly how many minutes I had a day to yeah. write. I knew when the school bus would pull up the corner and they would load them on and exactly, you know, it came back at 3.53 p.m. And so I knew that <laughs> that, was, uh, that, was gonna, that was gonna shut me down for the day. So I had until then to do it. And now yeah. I... Um, you know, write until I can get <laughs> get hungry. <laughs> so. Yeah, but write. I write every day. Some people don't uh, right now. Again, you mentioned that we are in uh, um, sheltering at home, staying distant. A lot of people are hoping to use this time to be creative. I do know a lot of people who are having to switch to working at home uh, are finding that you know their workload has increased because they are having to figure out how to do that. So you're going to be tired at least until you get that figured out, and you've got a lot of other um, stresses on your mind. Working, you know, worrying about your family, your community. So yeah. if it will lift you up yeah. to write. Uh, to write stories, to write poetry, to write music, to, to paint, whatever it is. If it will lift you up, then, um, then do it. If uh, don't 
stress yourself too much thinking that, that you're wasting you're wasting the time that, that you'll never get back. I mean, people say, oh, well, Shakespeare wrote King Lear in, in quarantine and Isaac Newton discovered, you know, came up with calculus. So yeah, yeah. good for them. Awesome. Good for them. <laughs> it took me, it took me a, a, a while to kind of get my head around uh, what was happening and not be completely distracted with, um, with the news and then say, okay, I, I am going yeah. to work. I can call it work, and so I can I can excuse myself to to do it that way. If yeah. if it's gonna if you feel it, do it. Well, you just tuned in. I'm talking to a best-selling novelist, Meg Gardner from Austin, Texas. And uh, Meg, you have several series of, of books that you've written. I want to talk about your latest uh, here just quickly in a second. But uh, you have the Evan Delaney uh, books. Uh, and uh, you have the Joe Beckett series, you have the uh, Unsubs books, and, uh, and some other standalone titles. But un Unsub, tell our listeners, if they're not familiar with you, what Unsub means. Unsub is a shorthand for unknown subject. It is the term created by the FBI to describe the unidentified uh, criminals that they are investigating and trying to capture. And it is particularly associated with the behavioral analysis unit and um, forensic investigations. The, the Unabomber bomber was a famous unsub. There are uh, serial predators whose identity remains unknown that are unsub, such as the Zodiac. Uh, the, yeah. the, my first book in that series was called Unsub because it was about a young, at the time, police detective, uh, trying to capture a, um, a, a serial killer who had been an infamous cold case that then turned hot. Uh, yeah. And since then, it's, uh, she was recruited by the FBI, Caitlin Hendricks, and is now working full time uh, to uh, hunt down serial predators. So unsubs are her job. Sounds like, uh, sounds like an interesting subject and a lot to work with there. So <laughs> <laughs> Until human nature changes, <laughs> Criminals yeah. will keep priming, and Caitlin will always have work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, your latest novel, tell our listeners about your latest novel. The Dark Corners of the Night right. has been published. That is book three in the NSUB series. And like all the other books in the series, there's a, a, a kernel of fact at the bottom of the plot. Each of the books in the series has been sparked by a real case. I kind of wanted to ground all these stories in uh, real life, actual investigations and the, the real kind of people who commit these crimes and even more important, the investigators who dedicate themselves to uh, trying to catch them. So The Dark Corners of the Night was uh, sparked by the Night Stalker who was a home invasion killer who terrorized the Los Angeles area in the 80s. And I was living in Southern California in the 80s, and I thought about this case, remembered that time when, you know, here we were, Southern California, the beaches were open, it was sunny, it was beautiful, and then the sun would go down. And this guy owned the night. He was an expert burglar. He could sleep, you know, he was slick. He was quiet. He could seem to get into any house, any time. And uh, nobody seemed to be able to stop him. People, uh, you couldn't buy yourself a, a burglar alarm system. There was a waiting list for that. Uh, there was, uh, you know, they ran out of dogs uh, at every shelter <laughs> in like six counties because people were trying to protect themselves. They were putting bells on their doors and gates to, so that somebody would awake them, you know, awaken them if this guy came in. Yeah. And I just remembered the, the sense of dread we all felt and wondering how were you ever going to catch somebody that on the night because we all had to sleep sometimes. So I thought, yeah. who, what kind of person becomes this sort of um, phantom who feeds on fear? And what would you have to do today to try to identify and, uh, you know, and, yeah. and capture him? Well, great story. Uh, so how does it end? <laughs> Listen, I told you I'm a suspense writer. <laughs> Keeping you in suspense is my job. Oh, so well, I, I'm not permitted to tell you that, but Caitlin right. and her, her team from uh, the Behavioral Analysis Unit are called to Los Angeles 
by the uh, LAPD and LA sheriffs to join a task force trying to capture a uh, shadow called the Midnight Man who invades homes, um, kills the adults, leaves the children unharmed, except of course they have uh, been in the house when dreadful things have happened. He leaves them as witnesses. He draws eyes all over the walls. He paints freaky uh, symbols and uh, tells people to, to report that I am the Legion of the Night. So the cops are stymied, frustrated, trying to figure out how they on earth they can uh, unmask this guy uh, before he escalates uh, ever more dramatically. So it's a, it's a cat and mouse game. It's a roller coaster. And uh, mm -hmm. it's about how, to, uh, how, do you, how do you pull the mask off someone who is so insidious and silent and uh, yeah. invisible? Yeah. Kind of like the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> Except we have to put masks on to fight that one. <laughs> Well, no, it sounds, uh, it sounds intriguing and you got my curiosity up and I'm sure a number of our, our listeners, that's the, the dark corners of the, the night. The dark corners of the night. And again, it's, and it, you know, it's a, uh, go ahead. Well, well, I'll just say it's available from uh, Amazon. Oh, yeah. It's hardback and paperback and you have it on Kim Kindle too. It's available right now in hardcover, yeah. uh, ebook and audio. So wherever yeah. you can get your books right now, you can order it online in all formats from Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Books A Million, IndieBound will help you find a local independent bookseller that uh, might be able to uh, set it by the curb or deliver. There's a lot of independent bookstores that are shipping. Yeah. And of course, if no matter what digital platform you like to use, you can download it with a couple of clicks to your phone, iBook, uh, you know, your iPad, your Kindle, Kobo, yeah. uh, no whatever and and get going on it right away again it's it's a thriller it's supposed to be tense it's supposed to make your heart race but it's above all it's supposed to be as you said intriguing and entertaining it's not supposed to be just uh uh you know to, to scare the pants off of you it's supposed to make you really feel like you are on the chase with yeah. the with caitlin and her team as they try to try to solve this crime takes takes us into that world so um, it's a, it's a, uh, thriller that Stephen King would enjoy and does enjoy. And he even likes the type style face size. So <laughs> there you go. What an endorsement, the dark corners of the night, uh, by Meg Gardner and uh, available wherever you can find books. Meg, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Okay. We'll keep us posted on your, uh, on your next series. Look forward to talking to you again about that, your next book. So uh, yeah. stay, uh, you know, lay low, stay safe, and, and stay sane during this period. <laughs> All right. You too. Take care. 95.1. John Butler. The Bee. The Bee.